Wellness. Our topic today is discover the power and flexibility of wellness structure systems. So that's a mouthful. I'm Joelle Guinnett, and I'm a territory manager for Adesso Systems, specifically for SolidWorks and everything that is works. So SolidWorks, 3D Experience Works family and, uh, and everything uh, in that umbrella. I have with me Michel Cloutier, who's uh, going to be showing you this information this morning. Uh, I want to start by prefacing why this topic. Um, and as we've traveled um, over the five years for me, 15 years for Michelle, um, speaking with customers, meeting with customers throughout the territory, um, we realize that um, often customers are not aware of what they have in their hands. So they have a SolidWorks license. And we keep adding to it. We keep improving it. We keep uh, adding things to it. We keep improving what we've added to it. So we keep doing things to SolidWorks. And unless you've taken the time to actually stop working for a bit to learn what's in SolidWorks, what's available, and, and what would be useful for you, you may just be using SolidWorks the same way you have been over the last 5, 10, 15 years, however long you've been working with SolidWorks. So we're glad that you're here with us this morning, taking some time to actually stop and, and learn something that we added in the last two years uh, in our SolidWorks releases. And uh, that I'm sure if you're in this industry or, or doing this type of work that you'll see how this can be of huge benefit to, to you. Um, so before we get started, I'm just going to show you a quick overview of how to use GoToWebinar if you've... Uh, this is your first time uh, joining us with this tool. The arrow uh, enables you, the orange arrow, sorry, enables you to close the window on that's on your right-hand side of your screen so that you can have a full screen view of, of what we're showing. Uh, if the audio uh, is not working for you on your computer, you can switch to phone. When you click on phone call, it will give you the information on how to access the phone call, so the dial-in number and the codes. Um, under that, there's a handout, so there's one file that's available there this morning that you can download at any time if you are interested. And below that is the, probably the most important section is the questions section. So as we're going through this information, or as more Michelle is going through this information with you in just a few minutes, if there's anything that you think about that you'd like to ask, um, please don't hesitate, put it in there. And at the end, Michelle will have uh, a few minutes to uh, to look at it and uh, and address those questions. And if he's already covered it after you asked it, then no problem. Uh, he'll just uh, skip over and uh, or say that he's uh, he's already covered it or or just reiterate what uh, what he already went through. So don't hesitate. Use the uh, the question or the chat uh, section to uh, to put some uh, some information, some questions in there. Uh, however, this would relate to you. Uh, and uh, with that, I will uh, I will pass it over to Michelle, who's been with SolidWorks for 15 years now, has seen a whole lot of changes, and uh, it is his job to actually learn every year what we add to SolidWorks and how we change it. And uh, he's uh, going to share some of that knowledge with you today, and uh, hope you hopefully uh, enable you to become more proficient uh, with what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So over to you, Michelle. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Joel, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so today we're going to talk about structure system. Um, so, you know, when we look at, you know, I, I'm a mechanical designer by trade, um, and I work in the industry, and I, I've I've done quite a bit of those, you know, structure weldments, uh, you know, frames and things like that. Using the traditional SolidWorks tools, you know, if you're doing any type of weldments, you're using these tools today, I hope. Um, but, you know, over time um, and complexity, sometimes it's not as easy as designing a frame. Uh, sometimes when you get into mostly larger structures, uh, using the traditional weldment tool can be a little bit tedious. And that's why we introduced in SolidWorks 2019 a whole new, a whole different way of doing weldments. Now, the traditional tools are still there. You can still use them, uh, obviously, uh, but this structure system really focuses on more of the large scale designs, if you want. And a lot of people don't even know it exists or don't know how to use it. So really today, the topic of the day is how to use those tools um, with SolidWorks 2019 and 2020. So, first of all, what is structure system? Um, quick definition, it's an advanced weldment environment uh, that helps you create and modify large numbers of weldment members in a single feature. That's 
really a, a quick summary of what the structure system tool is. It's an advanced wellment environment um, where we can, like you can read here, create and modify multiple me uh, members at the same time in a single feature. Now, before we actually dig into structure system, let me uh, do a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to start by highlighting some of the differences between the traditional wellment and structure system. Uh, then we're going to see the different steps in creating a new structure system. Now this, the structure system itself was one of the main enhancements of SOLIDWORKS 2019. So if you want to use structure system, you have to at least be using SOLIDWORKS 2019. But structure system in, in a whole was a multi-release project. So we started implementing some you know, new, we introduced structure system in 2019, but even in 2020, we added some really useful enhancements that I'm gonna cover here and also use do some use cases, different examples of where we could use structure system to facilitate and create structure is much faster, much easier. So let's talk about the differences, some of the key differences between the traditional and structure system. So when we look at traditional wellment design, everything in traditional wellment design needs a 2D or a 3D sketch. Um, you cannot put any type of wellment members if you don't have a sketch entity like a line or an arc to put it on. And it has to be a line or an arc. There's no other different types of um, elements that you could use to create those welded structures. Now, inside of structure system, you can definitely use 2D and 3D sketches as well, but then that's where the, uh, the comparison stops, you can use a lot more entities uh, with structure system. So for example, you can have only points in space and connect the points one another using and put some wellments between these points. Uh, you can also use edges. Um, you know, imagine that you want to design a, a frame, you could simply design or model a cube and then use the edges of that cube to create the frame. Um, so edges of models of surfaces and solids can be used as well. We can also use reference planes. So in some cases, you might not even have any type of geometry, not even a sketch, not even a solid or a surface with an edge. You can actually use simple reference planes and you can also use intersection between faces or reference planes and faces. So for example, if you have two planes that cross one another, you know, the intersection could be defined as a method to inserting a well-meant structure. So the difference between traditional and structure system, although you can use some of the same techniques, um, differs quite a bit, especially when you start doing larger systems. So, and what's, so what's the step? So we've seen that we can use not only sketches, but you can use points and planes, and you'll actually see a couple examples of me doing just that in, in a few moments. But what's the step in creating a new structure system? So basically, there's a it's a three-step process. First, we have to define primary members. Once we've done this, we define secondary members. And then we do the corner management tool. We use the corner management tool to define the corners, how to trim the corners. Now, if you're, you've used uh, wellments, traditional wellments, you know, corner management is not something different. It's something you're familiar with. You've done it uh, prior, but a lot of people might not know what primary member is versus secondary member. So I want to define that a little bit further before we actually get into a real life example. So what's the difference in structure system? What's the difference between primary and secondary member? So a 
primary member is something that's based on existing geometry. Now, again, that existing geometry can be different things. It can be sketches, it can be points, can be edges, reference planes, and surfaces. So in the image you see on the, on the right here, my primary members, which are the vertical beams or the columns, they're, they're put in place using sketch elements. Now, the difference between that and secondary members is that a secondary member is connects between existing members, either primary or secondary, and it does not require any type of existing geometry. So if you look again at the image here, the secondary member is simply defined by saying, hey, I want to connect the first column with the second column with an offset on the top, offset on the bottom. There's not even um, a plane, not a sketch, not a line, not a point, nothing. I'm just selecting both columns and say where I want this beam to connect to. So as you can see here, you don't have to sketch everything, which is really the beauty of structure system when we start doing complex weldments that have a lot of members, a lot of beams and cross members and whatnot. So we saw a little bit the difference between primary members and secondary secondary members. So let's actually show you what we're talking about here. Um, I'm gonna use the example here you see on the image. On the top right of the image, you see a, a frame. So this is actually part of a telescope that's 30 meters in diameter, so it's pretty big, um, just to give you a scale of things. But that frame here is all the pivoting where all the mechanics that pivots the telescope is. So that white um, hexagon there, this is what we're actually going to start modeling in right now. So let's actually just jump into SOLIDWORKS real quick and see what I've done to start this with. So basically what you see here are simply two surfaces. Um, I've started doing a sketch, <clears throat> just uh, two um, hexagon sketches here, and I've extruded both of these sketches at different height so that I could create simply two surfaces. So here's one surface and here's the outer surface. So I can actually start from here to create my structure system. So inside of SOLIDWORKS 2019 or 2020, you're, you're gonna need to add the tab that's called, oops, the tab that's called structure system. So it's a different tab than traditional weldments, although you could combine both of them together if you wanted to. So I'm gonna hit the structure system and then go directly into primary member. As I do that, I'm get prompted with the, um, the, um, the uh, information where I can start setting the different profiles. So this is very uh, common to uh, existing users. Uh, I'm gonna define the square two, 10 by 10. So that's going to be my profile. And in the member tab, where do I want these profiles to lay on? I can select the first option, which is a path. And this can be um, you know, simply edges. So I could simply go ahead and select the edges on this, pro, on this model. Um, I can also just window select if I wanna do this much faster. I just window select the whole thing. And very quickly, I've defined 34 different beams. So again, think about how you would actually have done this in real life using the traditional sketches. Everything would have need to be a sketch and you would have needed at least one, two, three, four, probably five or six sketches to do that. Uh, so it would have been a lot of work to do it up front, but very quickly now I can create all these profiles in one go. Now, the one thing to remember is that as I'm working, I'm still in the structure system. Um, so what that means is that even though I've added these beams, I can also go in, cross-select, and modify any of the existing beams. So right now, when I created all these beams originally, everything was square, but maybe those vertical members here, the, the, the columns, I want them to be round. So I can window select, 
go back into my profiles, say, no, I want to change that to round tubing and we'll use a 10 uh, diameter, click OK. So very quickly, I've changed all the vertical members to be round tubes. Now, as I'm doing this, I want to add a few other members. So for example, if I go and show this sketch here, oh, this sketch here that we see, we see the uh, kind of this zigzag here. So I want to create a new profiles going along this sketch. So again, I'm going to select primary members because I need to select existing geometry, which is this sketch. So that's the only other sketch in this uh, model. And then I'm going to say, well, yeah, I want to run a tube between these profiles and I simply select them. And before I say, okay, I'm going to resize it down a little bit to seven inches. I'm happy with the outputs and I'll click okay to that. Now, so far, what I've been doing is adding primary members, right? So I've created the whole cage, then the cross members, the diagonal, these are all primary members. So what's the difference between this and the secondary member? So let's actually do that now. So I'm going to go into the secondary member, and I'm going to say where I want to locate those members. So I want to have stiffeners that go, you know, pretty much the same shape as, as this octagon but at a different level. So I got these two planes here, and I want to set horizontal members uh, across these two planes. And then I'm going to select where do I want to connect them. So, and here there's a really useful chain option. So basically what that does is that as I'm selecting these beams, we can actually see the cross members in yellow being added, but I can actually just Go ahead and run around if you want the whole, you know, structure very quickly and add all of these horizontal beams to stiffen everything up. Now you see, I don't have any existing geometry to define the yellow round tubes that I'm adding just now. All of those were added by connecting primary members together on a different plane. I can go in and change the size of the tubing again. So if I want to go back to a square tube, I could certainly go back to creating that square tube. But very quickly, when I hit OK, I've basically created those secondary members. So hopefully this gives you a really good understanding of what's the difference between primary members and secondary members. So now that we've looked at how to create those primary members and secondary members, and I'll, I'll do a couple more examples along the way. Now it's time to figure out how to manage the corners and the trims. Now, while I'm in the uh, structure system, I'm adding members, but I'm not taking care of uh, any of the corners. Only when I exit the structure system will I be prompted with the corner management tool. Now, depending on what type of corners, I'm going to have different options. So first of all, a simple corner, what we call a simple corner, which really isn't a corner. It's more like a branch, if you want, because I have a, a vertical, in this example, a vertical tube. I'm just connecting to it. There's no real corner. I'm just connecting to you know, another beam. Um, so I'm going to have two options. So I'm going to have the planar trim or the body trim. So those can actually be taken care of for the whole, uh, all simple corners. If I actually get into what we call the two member corner, which is actually a corner, well, then I got to have another option, which is the miter, right? So if I have two corners, I can cut them at, at a bevel to create a corner. I also have the option for the planar trim and the body trim, the same thing as a simple corner. But then in cases, in some of those cases, I'm gonna have a complex corner where I'm gonna have more than two beams coming together in a corner. So, and those can actually be set very differently. And I'll, I'll show you an example in, 
going back to my SOLIDWORKS model, we'll see the examples for that. So let's actually just do that. Let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and then let's see how we manage those corners. So going back to SOLIDWORKS, you notice I'm still in the structure system. I'm going to exit out the structure system and that's when I'm prompted with the corner management tool. Now, as I zoom in, you can see a preview of each of the corners and they're highlighted by a dot here. So for example, if I select this dot, this is my simple corner number two. I can define, right now it's set to a planar trim. I don't really want that. I'd rather have a body trim so these tubes fit together really nicely. I can do that for the other corner, which is the same tube, but um, on, the, on the bottom side. Now you see the other tab here where I'm going to see my complex corners. When I select that, all my complex corners are going to highlight this time with a blue dot. Now if I zoom in and select this one, I'm going to manage the corner of this set you know, intersection. And as you can see, I got three beams here. I got this square tube, this square tube, this round tube, sorry, and this square tube. And right now, all of them are mittered into a, something of more of a, a complex cut. So you see here, I got different options. For example, the round tube, I can actually move it up. Moving it up means basically that the other beams are going to cut to this one. So this becomes actually my trim tool. It becomes my cutting tool and all the other beams adapts to that one. Now this would actually create a, you know, a fairly complex um, you know, cut. I would need to cut the square tubes with, with a round you know, cut. Doesn't really make sense. So what would probably make better sense is that if I use the round tube, if I move it back to its original place here, but if I move it to the bottom column, now this round tube is going to have a straight cut with the other two. So now my two other members have a, a bevel, but the bottom round tube is cut flat to them. And now what I would need to do is actually go in and do the same for all the other corners that needs to be adjusted. Right. So very quickly, I can simply go in. Now, I'm not going to do that for all the corners just to save a bit of time. But very quickly, when I do that, you're going to notice all my corners are beveled according to my settings. Now, the last thing I would probably want to do here is simply complete this design using a circular pattern, which I could simply go in here and say I want a pattern. Whoops not the whole system, but rather just those bodies. So I got options here to either uh, pattern uh, just the bodies or just the uh, different tubes here. And I could simply select all of my different bodies and go ahead and do that. So I got my certain, let me just hide this, hide my surfaces real quick to, there you go. So if I go back, and I say I want to pattern my bodies and select this beam, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Put that down to six. And very quickly, I've basically got my finished model all ready to go. Now, <clears throat> if I go to my finished model, what's great about this here as well is that in this environment, this reacts basically pretty much like any type of weldments. So if I go to my cut list and I say I want to update my cut list automatically, now very quickly I got all my cut list items that I could repurpose in a 2D drawing, pull that cut list into my 2D drawing. Um, so as you can see, all the information's there, ready to go, um, you know, to continue and put that into a 2D drawing if I want to. So what we've seen um, really quickly is how to create, you know, structures using structure system, large, you know, weldments very quickly. Um, we kind of overviewed a little bit what primary and secondary members are, 
talked a, a little bit about the corner management tool. Um, and all of this was initially introduced, like I mentioned before, in SolidWorks 2019. Now, you know, as I mentioned, again, you know, this is a multi-year project. It couldn't be done in just one year. So in 2020, we already added some really useful uh, enhancements to that. So we're going to talk about some of those enhancements. So more options for point point and length members, uh, support for tangent beams, um, also added a very useful split member creation tool. And also in 2020, we support mirrors and patterns. So in 2019, you could actually mirror the bodies like I've just done, but in 2020, you can actually mirror the whole structure system in a whole. Uh, rather than having to pick all the different um, solid bodies to do it. So let's go ahead into 2020 and uh, look at some of those enhancements. So I'm going to change models. I'm going to go to this one here. So as you can see, a very simple original design. I, I got basically two sketches, three planes, and one axis. That's, that's, that's it. Um, now I'm going to start my structure system, go into my primary members. You've seen me done this before. I'm going to use a different profile this time. I'm going to use a W profile and a 1265. And then I'm going to use some of the different options. So the option I want to use here is the point option. And I'm going to define by points. And with the new chain option here, I can actually select multiple points and connect between these points in space. Um, so very quickly, I could actually just connect multiple different points in space and create a structure system using those. Another option we've added in 2020 is now we have the option to go up to point. What this means is that I could actually say, I want to start a beam from both of these points here, but I want them to connect at one single location. So you see they're starting at the bottom here and connecting to this endpoint. Again, in 2020, another option is say, no, I'd rather use up to plane and connect to this plane here. And again, I could actually have points starting in different um, elevation, but all connecting to the same plane. I could even give them a direction vector using a edge or in this case a sketch and do that. So you see how very quickly we can create these beams um, inside of SolidWorks 2020. So I'm going to say okay to that to create that primary structure. And then I'm going to go to my secondary members. I'm going to say, where do I want to define these? So I want to have cross members at all of these planes. The profile I'm going to use is actually a bit smaller or uh, thinner, I should say. And where do I want them? Well, I want to connect between this beam and that beam. So very quickly, I can define these four cross members, but as you can see, this is too high. So again, in 2020, what we've added is the ability to create a pierce point. So basically, I'm going to reposition the beams so now they're positioned correctly and click OK to that. So again, another method to create those cross members, those cross beams very quickly. Again, I'll go back this time to secondary members another time and now i'm going to use a different uh, method between point members well so what this is is i want to connect this beam here to this beam there so you see the profile i'm going to simply reorient the profile so just give it 90 degrees and turn it and as i zoom out i want to control where this beam connects to. So you see here we got a offset, either a distance or length ratio. So if I set that to zero and to one end and zero at the other end, I can actually connect directly to the endpoint. Now, the benefit here in 2020 is that 
we have a new option called split member. So we can see here that I'm gonna need to remove a bit of that cross, that X bar um, going across the, uh, the horizontal beam. So I can actually go in and simply select these two beams. And then when I'm going to click OK and exit out of the structure system, all the trimming is going to be done automatically. So now I only need to define how I want to trim this. So my simple corners are going to trim to a body. Same thing for these ones here. And I'm going to click OK. And very quickly, you see here, if I zoom into this area, simply hide this beam, this is all well you know, beveled. And if I zoom back, you see here that I've actually removed the piece in between here. So very, very quickly, I'm able to create those cross members without having to do any trimming after, after the fact. Now, one of the other benefits of 2020 is the ability to do circular pattern of the whole existing structure system. So if I select here into bodies, rather than having to select all the bodies one by one, I can simply say, I want to pattern all of this um, in one go. Let's say 12, click OK. So very quickly, I've got my pattern. And I can also continue doing that between existing patterns. So if I go back into the structure system, this time, I don't need any primary members because all of them, they're here. But I want, to have the, I want to have secondary members, and I want to connect all these vertical supports. I want to connect them at the same plane location I've got here. And I want to connect this beam with this beam, this beam with this beam, so these two pairs of beams. Again, I can go into my profile and adjust the height if I need to, but most likely the position. I want this to be at the same position, the same height as my other beams, right? So very quickly now, I've defined these beams. I click OK. When I exit out, I'm prompted to do the corner management. Now for the corner management, I'm simply going to say, yeah, I want to trim all my simple corners like this and click OK. And again, very quickly, you see everything is trimmed. Each of my corners are trimmed correctly. And I can simply, from here again, go in and repattern this new structure system all the way around. So very quickly, um, I've created a quite impressive structure. I mean, you know, when you look at it, this already has like 204 different beam elements. And if I go into my properties, all my cut list table information is already created and ready to go. So very quickly, I hope you can see how quick we can create all of those um, beams or you know, large structures using the structure system in SOLIDWORKS 2020. Now, um, there's a lot of you know, new functionality I've just shown you. Maybe you haven't explored all of them yet, so I really encourage you to do so. But I wanna show some use cases that I thought were kind of interesting. Uh, some of them are coming from colleagues. Um, one of them, one of my colleagues wanted to create, you know, have a little uh, little shed this summer at the back of the house. He actually used the structure system to create the shed uh, with very little sketch. Actually, most of this is done with the structure system, if not all of it is done with the structure system. Uh, here's another example where you can also leverage structure system into simulation. So let me just uh, peek back into SOLIDWORKS real quick, just to show you this example here. This is an example I've done yesterday, actually. Uh, you can see it's uh, created from two or three different uh, structure system features. So you can see the features here. Right, so when you create a structure system, you actually create a structure system and a corner management 
feature that you can actually go in and edit after the fact as well. But the structure system itself is one feature. Um, still, what I wanted to mention is that even though I can do that here, um, I can certainly go in and create simulation out of this. So, um, you know, let me just show you the, the stress report. So basically, I've created this structure of, um, you know, a, a garage, and here's my added some loads to that. We can certainly go in and animate that. And because those are treated as beams into our SOLIDWORKS simulation tool, the solving of something like this is actually very, very quick. Uh, it solves under like 30 seconds. Um, so um, very quickly, you can get some good results. Really what's taking time here is actually just generating the animation so I can show you, show it to you on the screen. And if we zoom to the front view, we can actually see the bending of the roof under a certain weight um, using SOLIDWORKS simulation. So all good uh, information. Here's another one, again, shared by a colleague. All of this, which is pretty amazing, all of this here is created using two sketches. One of the sketch only has a single point in it, that's it. The other sketch has the hexagon, but that's it. Everything else, all of this is done using well or structure system. Now, look into the rails, like the bottom rails, you see a lot of you know definition between the bottom rails, not one sketch used to do that. Everything done with structure system using secondary elements, right? So um, if you wanna read a little, bit, a little bit more of how um, Andrew, my colleague, created this, uh, let's, you can go ahead and just capture a snapshot. That's actually, he wrote a blog, uh, blog post about it. So um, we've kind of reviewed quickly, really, today what uh, structure system is. We talked about the traditional wellments versus structure systems, um, the differences, how you can use edges, points, um, and how you, in some cases, in many cases, you don't even have, need to have any geometry to insert any of the uh, members. We saw how to create a structure system, start with primary members, then add secondary members if you need to, and then use the corner management tool. We talked a little bit about enhancements in 2020 and also some interesting use cases I wanted to highlight today. So actually I see, let me just check out questions real quick. Um, Okay, so a question from Joseph. I am unable to find how to show the structure system tab. I am using SOLIDWORKS 2019. Um, so typically, um, there might be something wrong, but if you want to simply show the structure system, simply right click, tabs, and it should show somewhere in there. Um, if you're still having issues, I'd recommend, if you don't see it there, I'd recommend just uh, give give a shout to your reseller tech support line and they'll, they'll help you with that. Um, now, if you wanna learn more about structure system, uh, you can actually go on mysolidworks.com, search in lessons and key in structure system. We actually have a little lesson there, introduction to structure system. Um, so I encourage you to do that if you want to learn more. Also, um, as of SOLIDWORKS 2020, we actually added in the Wellments training, we added a section dedicated to structure system. So if you just want to you know, ping your VARs, um, get in contact with your VARs and you want to have some training on the structure system, uh, there's also help that can uh, be provided from via your VARs, via your reseller. Um, <clears throat> so, well, that, I guess, hopefully that answers Eric's question. So yeah, um, in, in the 2020 curriculum of Wellments, structure system is included in 2020, uh, the curriculum for 2020. So with that, I'm going to leave uh, Joel to do the closing. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time today. Um, 
again, our sessions are being recorded and will be posted a little later today. And uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks, Michelle. Great information. I'm sure you all got to see something uh, new if you're not using it and maybe uh, an extra trip or a trick or two if you have been using it. Um, remember, there's a lot of ways to, to get more information or to learn more about this. And, uh, and this webinar is recorded, as Michelle mentioned. So you are free to view it as many times as you want. Uh, pause, restart, back up uh, and see what Michelle did. Uh, you can share it with others uh, within, within your company, uh, outside of your company. Uh, this is uh, free information, so please uh, feel free to, uh, to share it uh, as you wish. Uh, that's uh, what we do this for. So again, lots of ways. This webinar is, is one way, seeing it again, sharing it. Another way is mysolidworks.com. YouTube obviously uh, always has uh, lots of things, uh, and your reseller a great resource to help you or train you. Uh, in a more formal way to uh, to get you some information. Uh, if there's anything else that you think about, you can always uh, reach out to uh, to us, and we'd be more happy, more than happy to uh, to help you. Uh, with that, we will close the session for today. We'll see you on uh, further sessions uh, later on in the year for SolidWorks, 3D Experience Works. So lots of information coming this year. Stay tuned uh, for emails and invites from uh, either myself or uh, your reseller to uh, to see what's coming. Thanks again, Michelle, for the information. Thanks for everyone for joining us, and have a great day. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye.